everyone. Welcome to today's current affairs session of Swillspedia. The topics we are going to see today is Trans Fatty Assets, Pradhan Mandi Kisan Samman Nidhi Challenges, Green New Deal and with respect to editorial topic is Indo-Saudi Relationship. First one is Trans Fatty Acid. This Trans Fatty Acid is an unsaturated fatty acid that will cause a harmful effects on the human body. It will increase the low density lipoprotein that is called as a bad cholesterol. Thereby, it will affect the health of the human being. Apart from that, this trans fatty acid accounts for killing of 60,000 people per year in India alone. That shows how much dangerous this trans fatty acid with respect to the human health of the Indian people. Apart from that, the recent news with respect to this trans fatty acid is, recently the Kerala State Health Department has proposed an action plan on how to contain this trans fatty acid. So, the three major objectives of the action plan that has been proposed by this Health Department of Kerala State is, First one is to create the public awareness about what are the ill effects of this trans fatty acids on the human beings. And second important thing the action plan says is to encourage the local food industry people. So these are the local food business operators. They will have serious impact on this role playing on this health of the people. So to encourage the local food industry people to have meet the standards that have been set by the statutory limits of this trans fatty acids. So it will have a huge impact on the society on overall. And third important thing that is action plan tells is to identify the manufacturer as well as the supplier of this poly partially hydrogenated vegetable oil because this is one of the huge thing that is among the trans fatty acids. The example of this poly partially hydrogenated vegetable oil is Vanaspati. So that is predominantly used in this uh, sweet industries and many more bakeries and restaurants. So to identify the manufacturer as well as the supplier of this PHPO to the bakeries and restaurant is one of the important action plans that is this action plans of the Kerala State Department. So it will contain this Vanaspati and another partially hydrogenated vegetable oil thereby it will reduce the amount of trans fatty acid that has prevailed in that Kerala state. So another major thing of the campaign focused to reduce this trans fatty acid circulation in the people is first thing is they in the campaign they projected this ill effects of this trans fatty acid as well as this HFSS that is high fat, sugar and salt. So the major impact of this high HFSS on the human body will be illustrated in this campaign. Apart from this, the celebrities will be utilized as the ambassadors of this traditional food items. Thereby it will help, thereby it will improve the health of the people also. So this campaign will rope in this most of the celebrities as the food ambassadors of the healthy food. And the last thing with respect to this trans fatty acid recent news is it was this campaign was this campaign of this Kerala state has been supported by this vital strategist that is the nutrition wing of this World Bank as well as WHO, FSSI and food, state food health safety wing. So these are the players that have been involved in this action plan of this trans fatty acids reducing property. And the second topic is Pradhan Mandri Kisan Samman Nidhi challenges. So recently this scheme has been rolled out in this interim budget. So major challenges that is what is the huddling this implementation of this Kisan Samman Nidhi Yojana is first one is this Kisan Samman Nidhi Yojana has planned to give a direct benefit transfer of cash transfer of 6000 rupees per year to the farmers who have holding a land of less than 2 hectares. So this less than 2 hectares farmers will be the small and marginal farmers to give a direct support benefit to this farmers is the objective of this Kisan Samman Nidhi Yojana. So what are the challenges that is hurdling on implementation of this scheme is first thing is in the implementation scheme the in incomplete tenancy record as well as this improper of a land record that was not properly digitalized make the implementation of this scheme to be a huddle one because the identifying the beneficiaries is one of the key challenges that is placed in front of this Kisan Samman Nidhi Yojana. So the second thing with respect to the challenges is recently our Rangarajan committee has said this poverty line the benchmark they had made is rupees 32 rupees per day for the rural people as well as a people who are earning less than 47 rupees per day in the urban area will come under this poverty line as per this Rangarajan committee. So by giving 6000 rupees per year for the farmers who have a land up less than 2 hectares will show per day 17 rupees will be provided to the farmers. So this will be very much less than this the poverty line that has been prescribed by this Rangarajan committee. That shows still people will be come under this poverty line only after getting even 6000 rupees per year. That shows this this 6000 rupees will not be sufficient to meet mere minimum balance sustenance of the people. So this is one of the second challenges that with respect to this uh, Pradhan Mandri Kisan Samman Nidhi Yojana. And third important thing is this scheme does not uh, care about this local inflation because each and every state will have this rural population earning capacity will be different. 
so the absolute uh, in the relative poverty will be different from one state to another state so by having a common of 6000 rupees to all the states will not be equal to this uh, implementation of the scheme so it will not give a proper benefit to all the people of the indian society so it will shows that it will have take care of this inflations from region to region so at least the northern southern east west and northeastern region has to be separated so having a common thing of a 6000 rupees to all the farmers who have less than uh, 2 hectares will not be a equity one and third important thing with respect to this challenges of this pradhan mantri kisan samman yojana is recent study that has been conducted by niti ayog and the union government of department of food has said that a pilot project has been conducted in three union territories this chandigarh dadar nagar haveli and puducherry they have made how to replace this food grains the pds system with the cash benefit transfer the result from this study of this niti ayog and the union government is this was failed one of the failed thing that is this cash transfer is not that much effective as like a pds system so this fail is majorly due to this data inconsistency that is proper data was not having for the government people to how to distribute this amount of money to each and every family household so that makes this scheme to be a pilot project to be a failed one so even within this uh, highly urbanized uh, union territories we cannot um, get a proper output then how it will be impact to the whole india at a larger scale so it shows the major important hurdles of this pradhan mantri kisan samman nidhi yojana and apart from that this yojana does not tell about anything of what are the grievances redressal mechanism that it has to addresses if a, a farmer is failed to get a money then how he can approach the government that was not properly the steps was not properly said in this yojana so uh, another thing is this governance constraints was not completely has been ignored in this yojana so what are the governance constraint will be ha- handled how the government will be handle this benefits of the farmers it will not be uh, much more detailed in this interim budget and apart from this the examples of previous thing like this uh, pradhan mantri kisan samman nidhi yojana is two states have already implemented the scheme in their own state manner the first one is the kalia scheme of odisha it is giving 5000 rupees for a farm family for the five seasons along with other benefits also that shows it will have a more comprehensive nature of uplifting the farmers families livelihood so just giving a money will not be sufficient to lift their power, people from the above poverty line so along with this cash they will have another thing of the other benefits also so that the farming community will be grow at a much faster level so this kalia scheme is one of the important scheme that have a productive output in odisha and second thing is the recent launch of this uh, right to bantu scheme by telangana government in that they will give a direct benefit transfer of 4000 rupees per acre to each farmers for in each season it will also having a much more positive impact on this telangana district is in telangana state so these two schemes has been already launched in two states that shows it is giving a positive impact but the provided the data consistency will be only give a positive output otherwise it will lead to a much more of a leakage error as well as inclusion and exclusion error so some farmers will get big farmers may uh, lead to have more amount of money while the poor farmers who don't have a proper legal tenancy or any other land records properly that will make the poor farmers will be at a vulnerable condition of not getting this amount of a money and the next topic with respect to prelims is green new deal the recent background of this green new deal is us has recently withdrawn from this paris climate summit agreement on the climate change so that shows uh, much more constraint on the us on how they are going to handle this climate change so this green new deal has been a four part program that has been launched in this us senator that is to how to made this us move away from this environmental crisis into a secure environment of future things so it will have a sustainable economic growth only if the environment of the us has been properly conserved so this green new deal has been deal about how the us will going to have handled that economical environmental crisis so that it will lead to a future secured economic growth and this green new deal has been similar to the name that has been earlier launched by us president of franklin roosevelt in 1930s to handle this economic and the social measures to handle the great depression economic depression so similar to that how this great environmental depression is going to be handled by the us is called this green new deal and as per this green new deal the 100 percentage of the us electrical power will be derived from clean renewable energy and there will be zero emission from the us by the 2030 this is the uh, target of this green new deal apart from that this green new deal also addresses the racial and the economic justice that is us has to be done to the all the other countries in the world and apart from that it acknowledges the responsibility of us 
for its historical emissions than from the industrial period itself. And it also recognizes how this 1.5 degree report of this IPCC is very much important to handle this climate change things. So how the climate change will be, mitigation steps will be taken over, how the electrical power completely depending on this renewable energy, clean renewable energy will be taken care. These are the things that has been handled by this Green New Deal. And the next topic is India-Saudi relationship. This India-Saudi is one of the important uh, parameter in the world scenario. Because in the international relationship, Saudi is one of the important thing that is trading with India. And it is one of the key players in the West Asia also. To, first important thing with respect to this Saudi relationship of India is oil. Because India's 20% of oil requirement has been met by the Saudi Arabian people only. So we are investing and Saudi Arabians are also investing in India's oil refinery projects. For example, this world largest oil refinery project has been invested by Saudi Arabia in India in the Ratnagiri district of Maharashtra. That shows how Saudi Arabia is provoking or involving much more in this India's oil needs. So by having a proper cordial relationship with Saudi is one of the important things for India to meet their own uh, energy security. And second important thing is this terrorism. That is the constraint between India and Saudi Arabia. Because the, after this post 9 bar 11, we started to have more of agreement related to this intelligence sharing. But in ground reality, there was not much more intelligence sharing has been happened. So because there was not much pressure has been put by this Saudi Arabia on this Pakistan to contain this terrorism in India and Afghanistan. And apart from this, this Saudi is acting as a hotspot of Wahhabi ideologism, which is the basic ideologism that has been spreading from Saudi Arabia that is the leading to more and more terrorism in the West Asia as well as in the Pakistan. And apart from this, another important constraint between India and Saudi relationship is Iran. Because Saudi wanted to contain this Iran. But India wanted to have an independent foreign policy. Even US started to play a role between this Iran and India. So in spite of the pressure also, India has started to have cordial relationship with the Iran. That shows the constraint between the US, Saudi and the India with respect to this Iran foreign policy. And apart from this, this India has already invested in Chabahar port in uh, Iran. That shows this uh, tug of war between this US, Saudi Arabia and India with respect to this Iran foreign policy. And apart from this, Saudi Arabia has been already investing in CPEC, that is China-Pakistan uh, Economic Corridor project, that is between the Pakistan and this uh, China. Saudi Arabia has been investing in it. This makes the constraint between this India and Saudi Arabia. And apart from this, this Israel is one of the things that is uh, playing a positive role between now India and Saudi Arabia. This Israel and Saudi Arabia are one of the allied people that are very close people. So recently, Saudi Arabia has allowed uh, permission for our Air India, the first airline, to have utilized this Saudi Arabia airspace in the to enter and exit the Israel. That shows this pro positive cordial relationship has been started to move between India and Saudi Arabia. Thereby, it will have a positive impact on the Israel relationship with India also. And apart from this, the Saudi Arabia with respect to trade, which is one of the important parameters, our Saudi Arabia is the fourth largest trade partner with the India. And they are giving a much more of oil things. So our trade with respect to the Saudi Arabia is mostly skewed towards the oil things only. We need to diversify that oil things. And we need to have made the export and the import basket to be a diversified one. So that is the first important thing we have to maintain with respect to this so India-Saudi relationship. And the labor relationship is India's most of the people is going as a labor to the Saudi Arabia. So each and every loss of Saudi Arabia will start to contain or which started to huddle this Indian labors in the Saudi Arabia. So this proper cordial relationship is much more important with respect to the labor market between India and Saudi Arabia. Because the Saudi Arabia is the largest expatriate group of Indian people living in the Saudi Arabia. So that makes one of the important key player of Saudi Arabia in India labor market. And apart from this, this Saudi Arabia has been put as a strategic partnership with India uh, with respect to this Delhi Declaration of 2006 and Riyadh Declaration of 2010. That makes that much more positive role of between India and Saudi Arabia because both players are one of the important arm uh, importer. So by having a proper collaboration, they can explore much more area with respect to the defense. Then they're planning to have a joint development of a defense product as well as this enhance the maritime security between India and Saudi Arabia. Because this Arabian Sea is one of the play, important thing, maritime thing that is between the India and Saudi Arabia. So by having a proper cordial relationship between uh, India and Saudi Arabia will enhance the defense related things between India and Saudi Arabia. And apart from this, we have already made this agreement and we have made a strategic partnership. But in the ground reality, it was not taking much more for faster level. So we need to have enhanced the speed of the nature, how we both are collaborating. 
because intelligence sharing thing and the strategic partnership we already made an agreement but still no we do, uh, did not take any positive step towards how to implement these things so that makes this cuddles between this india and saudi arabia so we need to have positively impact on saudi arabian people and saudi arabian people will not have a positive things of indian people so that only this will have to contain this terrorism it will play a huge role to contain this terrorism especially with respect to this pakistan with that thing we will end today's current session thank you